Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Snoozat Questions with Solution, we're going to be looking at some sample questions asked in Snoozat for the subject physics. So let's look at some physics questions of Snoozat, which are given as a sample. So today we're going to look at the chapter Current Electricity, which is one of the important chapters for SNU-SAT because current electricity it deals with the physics behind current voltage resistance etc so it's an integral part of you know grade 12 physics let's look at our first question two uniform wires a and b of the same metal and have equal are of same metal and have equal masses the radius of wire a is twice that of wire b the total resistance of A and B when connected in series, I mean, when connected in parallel is 4 ohm when resistance of wire A is 4.25, 5 ohm when the resistance of wire A is 4, 4 ohm when the resistance of wire B is 4.25, 5 ohm when the resistance of wire B is 4 ohm. Now, how do we solve this question? First of all, we know that the resistances are, con the, wire or the wires are connected in parallel. And so when the wires are connected in parallel, we can, you know, understand that the, equ the equivalent resistance are equivalent. It will be less than or equal to, it will actually it'll always be less than the individual resistances because when you're connecting it across parallel the voltage is same the current you know splits up to flow to both the different resistances so the overall resistance will be lesser than the individual resistances so when we look at our options you can see that option a may be correct option b cannot be correct because here the equivalent resistance is higher than four ohms and option d again also is incorrect because here five ohms is higher than the resistance of wire B that is 4. So therefore options B and D are exact are actually incorrect. So let's look at options A and C whether any of whether which one of them is correct. So we know that wires A and B are of the same metal. So that means wires A and B have equal resistivity because they're made of the same metal materials made of the materials which are same will have the same amount of resistivity because it's dependent on the material used also both these wires have equal masses now it must be noted that their volumes are unequal the reason being that volume depends on the radius and the radius of wire a is twice that of wire b so therefore radius of wire a equals two times the radius of wire b now since we know that ra equals two times rb we can rewrite it as radius of wire b being half the radius of wire A. Well, now that we know the relation between the radii of wire B and wire A, let's look at how to solve this question further. Now here we have two wires and they are of equal mass and their radii are different because one of the wires is stretched to have a different radius. Then we have a formula. So when two wires a and b are of equal mass and of equal and the same material and wire b is stretched to a different radius then the radius of wire B can be written as no, the, the resistance of wire B can be written as the resistance of wire A divided by n raised to 4 
Now here, RA and RB refers to the resistance and N represents the number of times the radius is changed. Now what this means is when we are you know comparing the radii we know that RA equals 2 times RB or 3 times RB so that's the number of times we're looking for here. Radius of B is changed. So here we know that the radius of wire B is 1 by 2 times the radius of wire A. So 1 by 2 will be the N here. So when we apply the formula RB equals RA divided by 1 by 2 the whole raised to 4 which is RA divided by 1 by 16. So RB is actually equal to 16 times R of A. So that means the resistance of B is 16 times the resistance of A. So now that we know how the resistances of A and B are related, let's, you know, connect the two wires in parallel. So when wires A and B are connected in parallel, one by R equivalent equals one by R of A plus one by R of B. Here, all R's refer to resistance. So one by R A plus one by R B can be written as R A plus R B divided by R A R B. This is by taking the LCM and adding the two fractions together. So since we know that 1 by R equivalent equals R A plus R B divided by R A R B, then R equivalent will be equal to R A times R B divided by R A plus R B. So therefore we now have an equation for the equivalent resistance. So let's put RB, the resistance of B, as 16 times the resistance of A. So you get RA times 16 into RA divided by RA plus 16 into RA. So that is equal to 16 times radius of A squared divided by 17 times radius of A. So this can be written as 16 times radius of A divided by 17 because here RA cancels with one of the RAs in the numerator. So we now know that R equivalent equals 16 by 17 times R of A. Now since the relation we have is in terms of R of A, that means that option C, 4 ohms when the resistance of wire B is 4.25 ohms is incorrect because our, you know, total resistance is now dependent on A rather than B. So therefore option A will be the only correct option left, but let's look at the answer just in case we have to prove, just in case it's not the answer. So let's prove it. All right. So when the, re the resistance on A is 4.25 ohms, our equivalent will be equal to 16 times 4.25 divided by 17. Well, let's just multiply 425 with 16 and then add the decimals. 5 times 6 is 30, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. 5 ones are 5, 2 ones are 2, 4 ones are 4. So 0, 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, and then 2 plus 4 is 6. So 6800 is the product. And since we have to, you know, divide whatever the product is by 100 in order to have the correct decimal place, 16 times 4.25 will be actually equal to 68. So 68 divided by 17 will be our equivalent. Now, let's... Now we know that 7 times 4 is 28, so let's 
do 17 times 4 to see whether we get 68. So 7 times 4 is 28, 1 times 4 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. So therefore, 68 by 17 will actually be equal to 4 ohms. So we have now proved successfully that the equivalent resistance will be 4 ohms when the resistance of wire A will be 4.25 ohms. So therefore, the correct option here is option A, 4 ohms when the resistance of wire A is 4.25 ohms. Remember, this, these wires are connected in parallel, so the equivalent resistance cannot be greater than the resistance which is given, so B and D are incorrect. And after using the given you know, conditions, we got the re equivalent resistance as a term you know, as a term of wire A, I mean, so therefore, option C will also turn out to be incorrect because wire B will have, will not have 4.25 ohms if wire, if the equivalent resistance is 4, it has to be lower or another value. Now, let's look at another question of physics. A battery of EMF 10 volts and internal resistance 0 0.5 ohms is connected across a variable resistance R. The value of R for which the power delivered in it is maximum is given by 2 ohms, 0 0.25 ohms, 1 ohms, 0 0.5 ohms. So here we will use the formula for output power of a cell. So the output power of a cell P equals V square divided by R plus R, the whole square times capital R. Small r refers to the internal resistance, capital R refers to, you know, the external resistance, which is variable. So, let's put in the values. So, V square is 10 times 10, so that's 100, divided by 0 0.5 plus R, the whole square, times capital R. The trouble here is we don't know the power. We don't know the power of the battery when we have voltage, the EMF as 10 volts and the resistance as internal resistance 0 0.5 ohms. But what we do know is a condition for output power of a cell. Output power is maximum when the internal resistance is equal to the external resistance. So therefore, the value of R at P max, it'll be 100 divided by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, the whole square, times 0 0.5. So that is 100 divided by 1 times 0 0.5. So we'll get power max, and that power max will be received when option D, 0 0.5 ohms, is the correct answer because the condition is that output power is maximum when internal resistance is equal to the external resistance. And since we know that the external resistance is variable, we just put the value of the internal resistance that is 0 0.5 ohms as our answer. So option D is the correct option for this question. Okay, so 0 0.5 ohms. Now let's look at the final question for this episode. If R1 and R2 are respectively the filament resistances of a 400 watt bulb and a 200 watt bulb, designed to operate on the same voltage, then R1, then which of these relations are true? R1 equals 2R2, R2 equals 2R1, R2 equals 4R1, R1 equals 4R2. Well, how do we solve this question? We know that power is equal to voltage times the current, and the current can be written as V by R. So therefore, the power is V squared divided by R. So, 
Now we know that power equals voltage squared divided by R. We can actually find a relation between power and resistance. So power is inversely proportional to the resistance. And since both of these, you know, bulbs are designed to operate on the same voltage, therefore the power, therefore P1 divided by P2 will be equal to R2 divided by R1. Here, power 1 is 400, power 2 is 200, and so we just plug in the values. So R2 divided by R1 will be equal to 400 watts divided by 200 watts. So the zeros cancel each other, 4 goes into 2 twice. So therefore, R2 by R1 equals 2, which means resistance 2, the resistance of bulb 2 is twice the resistance of bulb 1. So therefore, the correct answer among the following is option B, R2 equals 2 R1. And the best way to get that answer is to, find, is to use the formula P equals V squared by R. From there, you'll get the relation between power and resistance. So since we know that power is inversely proportional to the resistance, you know, comparing the resistances can be done by P1 by P2 equals R2 by R1. Since we know the values of the powers, we just have to substitute those and we'll get R2 equals 2 times of R1 as the correct answer. So we hope you found this episode interesting. If you want to learn more about SnooSad, then don't forget to hit the playlist in the description box down below. Also, do consider subscribing to our channel for getting more educational content. If you want to get updates about our latest content, then don't forget to hit the notifications button, the bell icon that's present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.